Yo, what's up everybody, it's Tuna. In today's video, I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about the Lantern of Aramore, which is the mechanic that you find in maps, and exactly how it functions, and the things that you want to look for, and the best embers and all flames that you want to use in order to min-max the loot that you get from it. Now, everything in this video, of course, is going to be subject to change. As this league, there has been more changes to the league mechanic than in previous leagues or anything like that. And there seems to be like quite a lot of balance changes coming in. However, for the most part, things are sort of um, a little bit set in place slash discovered. And hopefully, if there are any changes in the future, I will be able to update you guys on that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about it and how I min max it and why it's so good. So as of yesterday, a massive patch has come through the 3.24 B patch, which essentially has absolutely buffed everything about the league mechanic. The occurrence of lantern modifiers, all of the drops, the crafting and all that good stuff. So what you're seeing right now is sort of like a renaissance for this league, which brought it from being extremely, I don't want to say boring or tedious because I, I could see the potential in it before, but you know, it's gotten to the point now that in my opinion, this is one of the best leagues we've ever had in terms of juice and in terms of end game because of the variety of things that you can do. Of course, outside for the fringe cases where MF has been nerfed and card finding has been nerfed. So for those people, I'm really sorry that your content has um, sort of like seen a little bit of a reduction, but for the general population in general, there is a lot more things to do and a lot more variants and a lot of strategies are now more worth to do than in the past. And that, in my opinion, is very exciting because Uncharted Waters is what I really, really like about Path of Exile, you know, discovering new things and doing all that kind of stuff. But I know that it's not necessarily what everybody wants. So this video is here to serve as a way for you guys to just get a good idea of what you want to look for once you use the Lantern of Aramore and the modifiers that I think are the best and how to min-max them. So what is the Lantern of Aramore? Essentially what it is is that when you put a map into your device, and I'm going to be basically taking this out so I don't waste my scarabs, but when you'll be putting a map into your device, it pops up and it gives you a variety of modifiers. And these modifiers are going to be buffed by your Atlas passive tree as well, right? So if I was to exit out of this and I was to show you the passives here at the bottom left, which I think anybody who's doing maps should be running, um, you know, here we're getting a 30% increased chance for devoted modifiers. Devoted modifiers are specifically the modifiers that are gold, as you can see here. These are devoted and you can mouse over here on the right. You can see it's like this, this is tied to something else, thermoturgist, haunted, etc, etc. Yeah, devoted modifiers are the juice and this is basically what you're looking for. So, in my opinion, if you're running a uh, mapping setup, you absolutely want to be having a devoted pursuit, as this will, you know, have a 30% increased chance for devoted modifiers, which is massive multiplier. And then also, uh, haunted modifiers in the Lantern of Aramore are a tier higher. This is an absolutely massive buff to your devoted modifiers, because in many cases, that is a 33% more, um, basically a 33% more loot to the devoted modifiers themselves. However, uh, of course, the devoted modifiers themselves can actually spawn at their highest tier, and beyond that, they can't level up. So in some cases, this is actually not doing anything, but for the cost of it being, you know, essentially just one point, as you can just path through it, it is one of the strongest modifiers on the tree to buff the league mechanic, and is absolutely mandatory as well for basically any, any um, strategy that is running uh, maps in general. So yeah, absolutely you wanna be speccing into those. Now, there are other uh, nodes up here on the top left, which buff uh, basically the in-map mechanic, but this is specifically going to be buffing all flames and embers, which are the extra things that you can put onto your, um, your devoted mods to, in order to buff them, right? So these are going to be the modifiers to them, and you can see that I have a bunch of them here. So there are going to be a lot of these. And these are going to essentially be completely changing the pack that you are applying to them. So if I was to open up the Lantern of Aramore again, you can see that I have Singe Sirens here. If I was to apply one of these modifiers, not only is it going to be changing the mob type, but it's also going to be adding a reward to them. And this reward can also be buffed by the devoted modifiers, because in some cases they are, as you can see here, increased rarity of items dropped. They are able to uh, modify items that these monsters drop so in case of this modifier as an example pack monsters can drop a broken circle artifacts you can buff this if you were to have a percentage increased quantity of items dropped and you you can put that there basically and that's what that's going to be increasing the amount of broken circle artifacts dropped by that specific monster 
However, things get a little bit complicated as there are additional modifiers that can then further scale the loot that you get. And that is the modifiers to both pack size and pack density. These are the two most important modifiers when thinking of how many monsters are in your map and in general how much loot you will get because the more packs there are, the more monsters and the more percentage chance you have to drop specific items from those monsters and the higher pack density as well means there are more packs throughout your map. So remember that pack density equals how many packs there are in your map and pack size equals how many monsters there are in each pack. The one thing that you got to realize as well is that there is, for example, in this pack, 7 to 22 monsters. That means that there is a pretty big variance and discrepancy between them. like a pack can roll up to, from 7 monsters to 22. But there are all flames, for example, all flame ember of frogs, which has a lower variance. So that means that the pack size is rolled between 16 to 21. This means that there are more... Um, chances of getting divine orbs and stuff like that if you were to get that devoted modifier because uh, essentially it guarantees a lower variance therefore is more con consistent and that is what you're looking for you're looking for consistency in this regard but um you know on top of all of that there are additional things that can buff the amount of packs as well as the uh increased effect of the devoted modifiers and that is here more pack size as well as plus one tier of modifiers one more thing to mention is that the Lantern of Aramor is going to be uh, organized from highest pack density to lowest pack density. As you can see here, the pack density says high, and as I go down, it's going to be going from high to normal, very low, and you know also low, of course. So, in some cases, having a more pack size multiplier on this is um, not as good as just going for one of these. As you can expect there to be less packs uh, of monsters throughout your map. However, if it does have the pack size, it means that the pack size itself, you know, it goes from um, potentially 7 to 22 and this one goes 11 to 32. So you have to make sure that like uh, the, the, the rule of thumb here is that you do not want to go below uh, high pack size, especially if you are trying to apply Lantern of Aramore that... Um, um, like a, basically a devoted modifier that scales off of uh, pack monsters. However, in some cases, there are uh, modifiers which do not necessarily scale off pack size, rather pack density. Therefore, you know, th those it is way more important to, to be putting more at the top uh, in comparison to ones that scale more with pack density. But in, in general, do not go below like the first few um uh, packs here because you absolutely do want to be like getting the most out of them in in terms of like pack density right pack density is the highest multiplier for monsters you know if there's like a lower pack density say there are three packs throughout your map and that is like a normal pack density and you go to very low and that becomes like one pack that is basically like a 200 percent increase uh number of monsters as opposed to just being able to get a 50 percent more pack size so yeah, make sure you are putting the Lantern of Aramore in the top packs. It is really important to min-max your loot this way and it's something that I really, really recommend. But uh, I also want to talk about now basically the combinations that you're looking for and the type of devoted modifiers and what type of embers you should be applying to those specific monsters and those specific devoted modifiers because this is when we get to, to the juice, basically. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you guys a list that you can find on PoEDB. And I will link this one in the description as well for anybody who's interested to know anything about the devoted modifiers. So as we saw earlier, we can see here uh, pack size and that kind of stuff. Those are the modifiers that are applied to your monsters. And you can see there are different tiers. And as I previously mentioned by looking at the Atlas passive tree, if I open it up here, these are going to be not only increased by 30%, but they are also going to be, uh, you know, a tier higher. Therefore, you know, if you were to be spawning at 200%, um, like a tier 2 devoted modifier which grants you 800% increased experience this is going to be upgraded up to T3 instead so it'll be 1200 so you see that is a massive jump of power there that you get from the Atlas passive and why it is so important to have that spec if you are doing a mapping strategy that is not only you know going to be applied to that but also for example to increased quantity but one thing to keep in mind is that beyond T3 on increased quantity, there is nothing. So it's not like it's going to be going to T4. So that is the only time where that um, that Atlas point is actually not going to be granting you any sort of benefit. But, you know, having it on there has very low opportunity cost because you do want to be grabbing the 30% increased effect, which, you know, you absolutely want to have anyways at all times. 
So yeah, that is a one of the examples, but I do want to give you guys an example of divine orbs because of course that is what people care about, right? There are different modifiers to divine orbs. So let's actually search here divine so that we can actually narrow it down and have a better look at what we're looking at. There are um, chances to drop divine orbs here and here and here. And these modifiers themselves are going to be um, what you're looking for for the most part. So chance for to drop a divine orb. What this means is that every monster is going to have a base chance to drop a divine orb. And um, therefore, what you are looking for as a player is you are looking for essentially um, more monsters. And in this case, if you want more monsters, the best way to do that is to be placing your, your packs at like the, the highest tier. So if you were to have, you know, imagine this was to be percentage chance to drop a divine orb, you want to be placing this at the very top because as we previously mentioned this has the highest pack density however because this also has a pretty high variance want to, what you want to be applying to this pack is you want to be applying a normalizer and also a buff in the form of you know all flame ember of brogs or all, all flame ember of um rats which i could show you guys right here because these two embers have the highest number of monsters within the pack of course, this has actually been nerfed as of today's patch, but it is still, as we know, the best uh, modifiers and all, all flame embers to be putting on this uh, flat percentage chance to drop a, um, a divine orb per monster. So yeah, the rule of thumb is, is that if you do get a percentage chance to drop a divine, you want to be putting it as high as possible so long as you have, um, you know, you don't have a reduction and so long as you don't have a percentage more pack size within the first few entries. But if, for example, you were to get 50% more pack size here or here, that is um, the absolute juice because you're not only going to be getting, you know, um, the high pack density, but you're also going to be getting 50% more pack size to that pack density, which is then also going to be buffing all flame ember of frogs and stuff like that. So that's how you get into crazy numbers of uh, potential loot and how you've been seeing people really be getting a crazy amount of loot from um, the Night of Aramore. Another modifier that I wanted to talk about is um, here you can see dropped items are converted to uh, divine orbs. So dropped jewelry are converted to divine orbs. This one is absolutely massive as well because you are actually able to um, specifically target jewelry by adding in monsters that are modified or that have high rarity modifiers. Those high rarity modifiers are generally present within monsters that are you know either unique or have a specific uh, like a specific multiplier built into them and as of right now the two monsters that are most um, applicable in this scenario are the meat sack which is you know what people have been using up until this point which is all flame member of meat sack this guy has like a crazy amount of uh, rarity and quantity built in however in my opinion the best one to be using on the jewelry conversion one is actually anarchy because anarchy spawns you know um like pack size of two to four so that's going to be two to four rogue exiles per pack and if you put it on high pack density here uh, that's going to be many packs within the map that are spawning from between two to four rogue exiles and rogue exiles you know you guys have probably killed a bunch of them you see you know how much um how much jewelry they drop so you can just imagine that if you are converting all of that jewelry to divine orbs this is how you get absolutely insane amounts of drops from um from those monsters and it's like this modifier here is by far the best divine orb modifier that you can get so long as you do have uh rogue exiles or meat sacks at the handy and i do recommend absolutely recommend that you guys go out and you buy uh frogs rats rogue exiles and meat sack and you put those inside of here your necropolis locker and you never touch them until you find one of those uh, crazy modifiers right now all of the other ones are of course really nice but we'll talk about that a little later and how you can best use them however the main big juice of the mechanic is going to be putting a crazy good devoted modifier like divine orbs or scarabs or something or exalted orbs as well is a very good one as well as maps and then you want to be then applying um you know basically like uh, one of these monsters to them in order to further buff that modifier but let's look a look at some of the other modifiers like for example uh dropped items are, uh, with rarity are converted to maps this one is really good you can use anarchy on that one too because um yeah essentially like as long as you have a monster with high rarity it's going to convert all of that to maps and you can come out of a map with like 200 extra maps 
And as of right now, people are burning through maps because of, uh, you know, looking for Lantern of Air, more devoted modifiers. Therefore, you know, going for something like this is going to mean that you come out of a map with 200 maps, which essentially is going to be like about 8 to 10 chaos each. So yeah, you can do the maths. It's pretty insane uh, amount of loot. Another really good one is dropped items with rarity are converted to scarabs. This is going to be uh, also resulting in a ton of scarabs and a meat sack as well as anarchy are the two best modifiers to be uh, using on this one. So you want to be applying ember of meat sack uh, or anarchy on that one to be dropping many, many scarabs from those monsters. So that is the one that I recommend on that one too. And then another really good one, of course, is exalted orbs. And Exalted Orbs has, similarly to Divine Orbs, has both the Jewelry Conversion as well as the Pack Monster Conversion. So again, for the Jewelry Conversion, you want to be looking for uh, Anarchy, Ember. But for the Pack Size one, you want to be looking for both Rats as well as Frogs. Now, there's also a lot of other modifiers to talk about. And many of them are going to be affecting, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like you're getting into very more complicated um, sort of synergies between different modifiers. And um, one example would be the, you know, like the holy grail of modifiers. Like, for example, if I was to get percentage chance uh, for items to be, uh, for jewelry items to be converted to divine orbs, as I previously showed you here, uh, drop jewelry is converted to divine orbs. Imagine I had drop jewelry is converted to divine orbs and I also had pack spawn tormented spirit on death. And I was to be able to like basically spawn tormented spirits by killing uh, these packs and those would then... Uh, possess my rogue exiles you can imagine how much jewelry is going to be dropping from those monsters and additionally there are further ways to scale that sort of stuff by potentially specking into tormented spirits so in those situations what you're doing is you are fishing for jewelry conversions and then you are trying to be putting uh tormented spirits onto your rare monsters in your map it's going to be like uh, it's going to be touching those monsters as well as you know buffing them so yeah uh it's going to be getting like a crazy amount of loot from those mobs, potentially getting like massive divine orb bombs from that. So this right here, this drop jewelry converted to divine orbs is by far right now is the absolute best modifier that you can get. Um, especially since as of today, this has actually been nerfed down to 3% uh, for T3 devoted modifier. So yeah, we are really looking for that big, big, big conversion. So that is one way to also start thinking about how to synergize uh, different modifiers together and how to also synergize your atlas passive tree as well as other things in order to get those crazy crazy um, drops and whatnot right um, this mechanic is just like really 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 interesting especially now that it's been buffed there's so much more that I could talk about and uh, I'll just show a couple more examples for you guys as I'm opening maps here in order to essentially like uh, give you guys a better idea of things that you can look forward to all right so this modifier right here the strongest monster in the pack gets dropped armor is converted to alterations this can also of course be divine orbs as well as scarabs as well as maps as we previously mentioned and this modifier specifically is the one that is actually best to be using with the all flame ember of meat sack because this is going to be the monster in your map that gets the highest quantity and rarity but it's also a pack size of one to one meaning that you know, each pack is only going to have one monster and that one monster is going to have the highest quant and rarity multiplier on it, you know, currently present in the game. So we do not actually care about pack size. Rather, we only care about pack density when we are applying this all flame ember. So if you were ever to get into a situation where you get um, strongest monster in the pack gets dropped, divine orbs is converted to, um, you know, or dropped armor is converted to divine orbs or whatever, you're going to want to be uh, applying your all flame ember of meat sack on the highest possible monster here with the highest pack density and then you know you will be applying that devoted modifier onto that monster uh, to be able to get the most loot out of it so that is pretty much everything about this lean mechanic and um all that I really have to talk about for today as we go on to the league you know there's many other things that to keep that you can keep in mind so for example uh like there's le less pack size these are just things that you want to avoid you never want to be putting your devoted modifiers on these kinds of things ggg have sort of just added these in to sort of like be like a little bit more variance in the lean mechanic to add a little bit of either excitement or disappointment depending on which uh which pack this is landing on but um to as a tldr for this video the divine orbs good strongest pack monster put that on all flame ember of meat sack if it says pack uh, monsters drop you want to be putting rats or frogs 
And if it says jewelry conversion, then you want to be putting anarchy ember of all flame and make sure that you're putting your devoted modifiers as high up as possible here into your lantern of Aramore as you are fishing for higher pack size as well as pack density and potential modifiers that then further buff your devoted modifier to higher tiers, either a double green arrow up or a plus symbol that giving you that's giving you 50% pack size. So that is all for this video today. I hope this has explained to you guys a little bit how the lead mechanic works, what to look forward to and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, currently I'm doing some really interesting stuff, um, testing out all of these strategies, Atlas passive tree stuff, how to min max this, how to find scarabs and all that sort of stuff. Like for example, going through like all the atlases that I've tested this league and all that kind of stuff. Uh, however, that is a video that I will work on very soon and I'll have for you guys, um, you know, probably by either uh, the start of tomorrow or um, the next day. But look forward to that. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please, I would really appreciate a subscription on the channel. But otherwise, you know, uh, let us know in the description like the coolest thing that you have dropped this league or in general, like what the voter modifier you have found. Or of course, I am not all knowing. If, um, if you have heard something or something that I didn't mention in this video, I would really appreciate it if you leave it in the comments as I, as I do feel like there's so much new cool stuff to discover, so much new information uh for people to like you know share around your findings and all that stuff everything is valuable right like all your, your 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 experience is very valuable to me and i think um i would appreciate for you guys to share that basically but yeah thanks so much for watching guys hope this video has been helpful and i hope you guys are excited as i am about the league and um in general uh how good the league is after the buffs right because not only did we get all of this crazy cool loot stuff, but there is an entirely new thing outside of that, which is the crafting. And this is like one of those leagues that usually we're like, oh, is it a crafting league or is it a mapping league? Well, this league is both. And actually it also has bossing in the form of T-17s and new Ubers. So it's it's a league for everyone. And and honestly, it, it came out and it was a, it, it was kind of like the terrible league at first. But now it's, as I said in the start of the video, in my opinion, going to be a league that is going to go down in the history books as one of the best leaks ever. Thank you very much, guys, once again. I hope to see you guys again soon. Peace out. Also, I stream on Twitch every day and YouTube. Come check me out and say hello. All right, peace.